Like its predecessor, the PlayStation 2 had an amazing catalog of original titles that are worth exploring for those who never had the opportunity to experience these games at the time. Fortunately, the PCSX2, a PlayStation 2 emulator, not only plays an incredible back catalog of games that were available on the system, it also allows you to make them look even more incredible than they did in the past. As usual, I want to run through setting this emulator up from start to finish so that you too can enjoy what this incredible gaming console had to offer. Before we get started, I do want to cover some quick requirements as this emulator is certainly a demanding one. The most important of these requirements is the Visual C++ 2015 as you will not be able to run the emulator without it. You can certainly try running the emulator first as it may already be installed on your computer, but if it doesn't run, then you most likely need to download and install this first. For 2D accelerated titles, 2GB of memory, a 2GHz dual-core CPU, and an integrated GPU that can reach at least 1200 MHz is recommended. For 3D accelerated titles, 4GB of memory, a 3GHz dual-core CPU, and an integrated GPU that can reach at least 1500 MHz is recommended, especially if you want to boost the resolution and performance of your titles. The PCSX2 emulator can be downloaded on the official website PCX2.net. For this example, I will be using the Windows 10 operating system. After you have loaded the page, you'll want to hang your pointer over the Download tab. From here, you want to choose Windows under Development. It's a good idea to get the latest build of any emulator, as more titles will be supported, but for lower-end systems, an older build may have better performance, so consider this carefully before downloading the latest version. Clicking the Download button beside the latest version of PCXX2 will take you to another page, where you'll want to click Download again, and this should start downloading the emulator. The development version of PCX2 is a manual install which requires a program like WinRAR to unpack. It will be up to you to choose the emulator's destination, just make sure it's a place you can locate. Once the program is installed, let's take a look at the initial files in the folder. The first thing I want to point your attention to is the plugin folder. While we won't be doing anything with it now, it bears mentioning as a great deal of your configurations load from the files in this folder. The most important file here at the moment is the PCXX2 file, which can be identified by the icon located on the right side of the name. This is what we will use to launch the emulator for the first time. We will return to the folder in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and launch PCXX2, which will start a special wizard that we will use for our initial setup. The first page is just a welcome screen. Hit the next button to proceed forward. Here we have the initial configuration screen. Remember the plugin folder I showed you earlier? Well, everything you see here is placed in that folder. The first option has to do with the instruction set for your CPU. Depending on how old your CPU is, certain instruction sets will not be supported. For example, the default instruction set AX2 only supports CPUs that have been built around 2013 or later. If you want to be completely sure about what your CPU supports, the CPU-Z application will give you that information. I've left a link to that program in the description box below. When choosing an instruction set, I can only say performance gains aren't very huge between each instruction set, but some have found through testing that SSE 4.1 has some pretty good gains on AMD's CPU when coupling it with a DirectX X11 hardware API. Some we'll go over in greater detail with a little later. This is the only setting worth troubling with at the moment, as there aren't any options for the other plugins, so we can just move on to the next screen for now. Here you'll need to select the default BIOS you would like to use for the emulator. Where on earth are you going to put the BIOS, you ask? Good question. Initially, the folder for our BIOS does not show until after we have started the emulator, and so we'll need to head back to the folder and surprise, it's not there. Remember that certain games, depending on region, require a certain BIOS in order to work. Once you've added the BIOS to the folder, select Refresh List and pick a BIOS that you would like to use. Hit the Finish button. This will bring up the emulator, where I'll go over a few important settings that I recommend you look over. Click on the Config tab located on the menu. This will spawn a drop-down menu. Click on the first option on the list, Emulation Settings. The first thing I would like to draw your attention to is the preset option, which is checked by default. What this essentially does is give you recommended settings for the emulator. If you look to the right of the preset option, you have the preset slider, which has six presets you can choose from. 
Hovering over the slider brings up a brief explanation of each preset. For now, I recommend using the preset slider as it's pretty optimized when it comes to settings. If you have a multi-core CPU, then you'll want to choose the balance preset as this can help with performance for certain games. Bear in mind that this option can cause issues with certain titles where freezing can occur. If you come across this problem, bringing the slider back to safe will most likely fix the issue. For those interested in emulation overclocking to double or improve the frame rate of certain titles, you'll need to uncheck the preset option, go to the speed hack option, and go to EE cycle rate. Moving the slider forward will overclock the emulated CPU. Just remember that this does put stress on your real CPU. Once you are comfortable with your emulation settings, hit apply and OK to close the settings. Next, we'll take a look at some video settings. Go back to the config option and hover over video. This will create another drop down menu. Select plugin settings. This will bring up a new window. The renderer option will let you select an API. APIs have two distinct renderers, hardware and software, with software being the more accurate of the two, but requiring more from the CPU. Hardware, while not as accurate, is recommended as it can use a dedicated or integrated GPU and allows for upscaling and additional enhancement hacks. OpenGL is the recommended API for NVIDIA GPUs, while DirectX 11 is recommended for AMD GPUs. Since I have an NVIDIA GPU, I'll be going with OpenGL. The main option you will probably be the most interested in is the internal resolution. Here you can upscale up to eight times more than the original resolution. Bear in mind that the higher you go, the more stress it puts on the GPU. Upscaling can affect each game differently, which is why options like Enable HW Hacks is available. If you run into any strange artifacts, I recommend going into the advanced settings and hacks as there are a few options that could potentially fix the issue you are having. Next, we'll take a look at control pad settings. For the most part, nothing really needs to be changed outside of basic controller configuration to suit your needs. In the pad one tab, we will bring you to the window where you can change buttons. Depending on the device you are using, your controls may already be set up, so I recommend booting a game to see if they are correct before making any changes. If you do find that you need to make changes, Simply clicking the original PlayStation 2 button located on the right, followed by the corresponding button on your controller, will appear on the left-hand side the moment you press it so you can ensure you set it correctly. At any time, you can right-click over a specific configuration, and this will bring up a menu that will give you the option to delete it or clear the entire configuration. After that, we should be able to select our first game. Go to the C DVD option. This will bring up a drop-down menu or you want to hover over ISO selector. From there, another menu will appear. From this, you'll get two options, always ask when booting or browser. Selecting always ask will bring up a check mark by the option. Selecting browser will bring up the file manager where you can find and select your game of choice. For now, we'll leave this on always ask when booting, and now it's time to finally boot up a game. Go to system option where you get the drop down menu with a few options. There are two options for booting games. The first title full will boot the original PS2 starting screen before launching the game. While I believe this is mainly for nostalgia, there may be some cases where this is necessary to avoid certain game glitches. The second option title fast will bypass the original boot screen and load the game up directly. For old time's sake, we'll go with the full loading boot screen. This will bring up a new window where we'll select the game we want to load. Now I want to clear you into a few things while the game window is up. If you look at the top of the window, there are a few details that I recommend you take a look at when running your games for the first time. The first is speed. Speed is an easy way to indicate your frame rate. If the game is running at 100%, then that means your game is running at the intended speed. If your game happens to fall below the speed, then it's more than likely your hardware is not up to task, or you need to change some settings to get better performance. You will find the accurate frame rate within the parentheses beside the percentage. This is just another way to make sure your game is running at the proper frame rate. Most PlayStation 2 titles run at a consistent 60 frames per second, but there are a few 30 frames per second titles. If you find your game isn't running correctly, you may want to check the PCSX2 compatibility list. Double click on the window to go into full screen, and that is pretty much all there is to it. There are definitely more features that you can certainly take advantage of, one in particular I hope to showcase in the future. But for now, this is the core of your resident entertainment techie, signing out.